Hi guys, <clears throat> so here we're here with a watercolor Wednesday and while we're going to do a little um, probably watercolor ATC card, I wanted to show you this first. So this is, those of you who've been watching me know, is my Van Gogh um, uh, watercolor kit um, made by Talons, I believe. Yeah, um, Van Gogh I think is their high student grade or artist grade paint. They do make one that's just talent, just says talons. That's I think their student grade paint. But anyway, I really like this set. I think the colors are fairly well pigmented, and um, <clears throat> it was more pricey than the koi set because it has a lot more colors in it, but not you know super. Um, crazy wild out of this world so <laughs> like the you know schmink palette that I have or some of the Sennelier palettes um, and I you obviously you can tell it's very well loved I use it a lot so um, <clears throat> what I wanted to talk to you guys about is when you have a palette any palette if it's the Koi or it's a Winsor Newton or in this case a Van, Van Gogh or a Sennelier or a schmink a lot of the manufacturers make cake watercolors or watercolor sets like this one, but then they also make tube watercolors. Many, many times the tube colors match um, in the color in the cake, um, or they're fairly close. Not always, but a lot of times. I know it's true with Winsor Newton. I know it's true with Van Gogh and Sennelier and Schmink. Um, Daniel Smith doesn't make a cake watercolor. If they used to, they don't anymore. Um, but I know it's true with Van Gogh. And I know <coughs> Hobby Lobby carries Van Gogh tube watercolors. I know because before I got this set, I bought a couple from them. They don't carry this this kit. This kit I got at uh, Lens Art in Santa Cruz. I know um, if you go to my Amazon store, the link is in the description below. There is a link to... A kit like this one in the watercolor section you can also search in my Amazon store for Van Gogh watercolor set and whatever is in there should pop up that being said this is one that has let's see 6 12 18 it has 18 cakes and then it has these two tubes um, 6 12 yeah 18 and then it, so 18 cakes and then it has um, Payne's gray and Chinese white. So it actually has 20 colors. It's like, I, th I think the label says 18 plus bonus or something like that. Um, it came just like this with a brush and everything. I love this set, but in the short time I've had it, because I haven't really had it very long, and I've been using it a lot lately, um, I can tell you already, I'm going to zoom in here. <laughs> I must really love this color, this lemon yellow, because this little cake is already halfway or more empty, um, this little pan. And you can see if you look at some of the other pans, um, you know, they've, I'm getting pretty big divots in them. You can definitely tell which are my favorite colors. So I do recommend when you're starting out with watercolor, get some kind of a set, whether it's the Koi set, which is about $35, I think, retail without a coupon. Um, or it's one of these sets, which is, you know, depending on where you get it, this set is between 60 and 80, uh, you know, depending on where you get it, without a coupon. Get a set, because you're going to get a lot of colors in the set. I, I, I know for me, I need 12 to 18 colors or more to make me happy as a watercolorist. I cannot do one of those little teeny tiny sets that has like six or eight colors in it. That's just totally not enough color for me. I can do it in a pinch if I'm out traveling, and I have done, but um, if I'm doing a lot of watercoloring, I need one at least this big, if not bigger. That's just me. But I do like this kind of a set because you get a lot of colors. When you're first starting out, you can really, you know, you try all the colors that are in your set, and you'll learn by getting a set like this which colors you really gravitate towards and which colors you really enjoy a lot by which ones of the little pans or wells get empty first. And then when you start to build maybe your own custom palette, like one of the um, 
metal ones that I have, then you know when you do the custom palette, okay, I really love lemon yellow when I'm painting. I love a dark, deep red. This is Matter Lake Deep. Um, I would also probably, I know I have in one, some of my kits, uh, Lizard and Crimson, which is a dark red. Um, this is a Quidocrito Rose, which I, I do love a nice, bright pink. Um, and of course, I love my blues. I love this one, the Prussian blue. It's a turquoise blue. We all know I love that color. And Sap Green, which is my favorite green in either acrylic or watercolor. Um, so I know that already about myself. I definitely learned that over the years um, by having these watercolor sets. Now, normally in sets in the past, yellow ochre is like the first color to get empty. But as I learn and grow and become better with watercolor, I find that I'm using this color less, not because I don't like it, but because I really want something that indicates more brightness and lightness and warmth in my paintings. And for me, that's definitely the lemon yellow. And this is more of an accent. So I still use it, but just not as much. When these little pans do start to get empty, you can buy the accompanying um, tube watercolor and just refill it. And then you can let it dry. And it's rewettable, just like what was in here originally. Now with some of the manufacturers, you can buy by the little pans filled. Um, a lot of times though you're going to find that getting a the tube and refilling it yourself is probably going to be more affordable. Not always, but a lot of times. These Van Gogh tubes at Hobby Lobby without a coupon are between $3.99 and $4.59 depending on the pigment I think. I did get one extra color. I got a purple because this set doesn't actually have a purple in it and I've been mixing a lot of purple, which, you know, I don't necessarily mind doing, but I always come up with the same purple. I'd like to have a little bit of a different purple. The only thing is to, you know, as I'm doing this, and I've done this before, make sure I put the right color in the right pan because I've done that before and done this while I'm talking to somebody and then I end up putting the wrong color in the wrong place. So you can just add, refill your little pans as they start to get empty. I don't need to do the green yet, but I did get the green. And I got the ultramarine, which is, I think the ultramarine is fine right now. I got the purple. So for the purple, I'm going to do what I've been doing in the lid, which is adding a few extra colors in the lid. And I have this mixing section over here that already has purple in it. So I'm going to put some of this purple over here. And this is permanent blue violet. And I have it all over my hands. So I'm going to be able to show you guys what it looks like. <laughs> Let's see. Dip my fingers in some water. So there you go. It's a pretty purple. So that's my quick tip or hint. Um, next, I'm going to put these tubes away and I'm going to clean up a little, my desk a little bit here because it's a little bit messy. And then I think we'll do a watercolor ATC card and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm not going to zoom in any more than this so that you guys can see what colors I'm choosing as I'm watercoloring. Is it something I've been asked about a lot? Uh, I'm going to work on this little ATC card. This is a piece of watercolor paper that I cut to ATC card size, two and a half by three and a half. And when I have scraps of paper, I either cut them into postcard size or ATC card size. And if I'm not mistaken, this is Strathmore 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. You can tell it's cold press because the surface of it is a little bit textured. Can you see that? There you go. And I prefer cold press. I like the texture. Hot press. I have a sample here. This is my fluid watercolor block that I've been doing a lot of my assignments for my Jean Haynes book in lately. And you can tell by looking at the surface, this is hot press, it's completely smooth. It's okay to work on and I don't mind working on it, but if you gave me a choice between this or this, I like the cold press. So today we're going to work on the cold press. Um, I'm also trying really hard to really get into the habit of leaving intentional white space in my watercolor. I have a hard time with that. 
Um, I did a painting yesterday, this one, which was from the Jean Haynes book, which is in my Amazon shop if you want to look at it and get a copy. Um, and this was supposed to be done leaving the stems as white space or light space, and I ended up adding paint to them. I have, a, I have trouble leaving it just white. Um, I did a little bit better on this one, which were supposed to be garlic bulbs. They kind of look like, I don't know, avocados or peaches. Um, but there's more lighter or white space left open without having paint on it than in the uh, tulips. So we're going to try it on the <laughs> ATC card. We'll see what happens. Um, we're going to just stick to doing some flower shapes because the organic... You know, nature-inspired shapes are easier to do, and we will speed forward through that, and I'll be right back.
Okay, so there you have it. There is our Watercolor Wednesday ATC card, and I did my best to leave some white space. <laughs> I didn't leave a lot. I still put a lot of color. That just seems to be my thing, but I'll keep practicing. Anyway, it's real pretty. I love the way it turned out. It will be up for sale soon in my Etsy, Etsy shop, so look for it. If it's not there yet when you see this video, send me an email asking about it, and I will do my best to get it listed for you. My email address and the Etsy shop address and my Amazon store address are all in the description below the video, so look there. All right, don't forget to go out and have a great day, everybody. Practice your watercolors and have some fun and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it, and I'll see you later.